Hey again, um, my phone stopped recording, but that's okay, because I was at a pretty good stopping point, actually, as I said in the note that I just posted on the content section of the website, along with the first part of this lecture. Um, <clears throat> so, so far, just to recap a little bit, I, I distinguished Plato's texts into three levels, the literary, argumentative, and philosophical levels. Uh, I talked a bit about the literary level within Republic One, and I distinguished the argumentative from the philosophical and tried to justify that distinction, basically, um, in the first part of this lecture. Now I want to, to actually talk through the argumentative level, um, and I'm actually planning to make this a three-part lecture, and um, I'll probably end up posting part three tomorrow, where I'll actually get into the, the philosophical level, and um, there's a section of the text there that I want to look more closely at, um, but we'll save that for tomorrow, for Wednesday. Um, so the, the argumentative level, um, you have the, these three uh, definitions of justice, essentially, and the, the plot of this, as the plot of a lot of Socratic dialogues is, um, consists in Socrates basically tearing them down one by one, uh, leaving you with um, really nothing substantive at the end. Um, that tendency of Plato's, which is not true of all of his dialogues, but is true of a good number of them, uh, scholars refer to as aporetic. So coming from, from the word aporia, um, maybe you know that word, uh, basically means an impasse, um, a point after which you, you just can't go any farther. Um, so, so Republic One, if you want to take it as a dialogue unto itself, of course it's ultimately a part of a much larger one, but um, the first part of the Republic at least ends in aporia in this way. Um, you don't get a kind of final answer on what Socrates really thinks or on what Plato really thinks. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's just kind of anticipating what I'm going to say in the next lecture, though. Um, what are the three uh, forms of justice, or the three definitions of justice that are introduced here? Um, as some of you kind of picked up on in writing about on the discussion board, we tend to associate the, these various um, definitions of justice with the, the characters who present them. Um, so the first one is usually associated with Cephalus, even though that's actually kind of complicated in the text, it's really Socrates who first says it, and then um, it's Polymarchus who actually argues for it after Cephalus gets bored and leaves. Um, but for the sake of ease, we refer to it as Cephalus' definition, which essentially is to uh, repay one's debts and to um, tell the truth. So to repay one's debts and to tell the truth. Um, you can say that that expresses both equity in the sense of repaying one's debts and you know, that, that, that can, if you like, be taken more generally than just having to do with money. Um, you could maybe even apply that to something like one's debt to society. Uh, more kind of abstract notions like this could be embraced by that definition if you wanted to do some philosophical work with it. Um, from the discussion board post reading through them, it was pretty clear that most people were, mo at least who have chosen to comment so far, most people are most attracted to this definition of justice, of the, of the three that you get so far here in Republic One. Um, so to, to repay one's debts and to tell the truth, um, equity and honesty. Of course, Socrates then goes through and, and uh, kind of deconstructs the whole telling the truth part of that, shows that there are actually instances in which um, <clears throat> in which it's more, it's more appropriate to lie, in which it's better for the greater good to lie. Um, so you, you leave ultimately with, with the argument kind of leaving that definition behind, um, even if it might be the kind of most meritorious that we've gotten so far. The second definition, the one that we do associate with Polymarchus, um, is, as I kind of suggested by way of anticipation in the last lecture, a kind of warlike definition of justice. You might say this is sort of a, a soldier's sense of justice um, to, uh, to do good to one's friends and harm to one's enemies, essentially. So recognizing what side you're on and fighting for that side is basically this this particular version of justice. Again, this is not entirely illegitimate. There are situations in which that is the, the attitude one has to take, um, and you know people shouldn't necessarily be chastised for taking that attitude in certain situations. Um, so again, not a uh, totally wrong definition of justice, just an incomplete one, as Socrates again goes through and, and demonstrates for you. The last one, the, the, the more infamous one, I want to say a little bit more about 
by way of my own interpretation, and that, of course, is the definition of justice given by Thrasymachus in his kind of violent interruption of the otherwise civil conversation that Socrates and his friends had been having. Um, to, to dip back into the literary level here, you know, Plato goes to great length to associate Thrasymachus with violence, ultimately. Um, he says that you know, Socrates and his friends were, were physically afraid of him, not just put out by his, or uh, put off by his argument, but, um, but actually afraid uh, in, in the moment that's captured. Um, so Socrates, or Plato wants you to make this association, it's pretty clear. Um, uh, Thrasymachus and his notion of justice uh, have, some, have some correspondence with violence. Um, what is what does Thrasymachus? Sorry, what does Thrasymachus actually say that justice is the uh, the advantage of the stronger, or maybe the expression you're more used to hearing, might makes right. That's basically what we're talking about here, right? Um, and as I said in one interaction on the discussion board here, um, or earlier, um, th there's a sense in which I think. Uh, Thrasymachus' definition of justice differs from the other two in its very status, um, by which I mean, and here I'm invoking terms that kind of came up on the, uh, the philosophical vocabulary lexicon that we went over last week. Um, in a certain sense, I think the other two definitions of justice that you get in Republic I are basically normative. They're saying how justice should be, what a good, uh, how a good person should, or how a just person should behave. Um, Thrasymachus, as 